Hello, this is Janet from Servant for His Glory 44, and I just wanted to share some things that the Father's put on my heart to share in my devotion time with those that would have ears to hear and eyes to see. I feel like these things are really um, just beautiful words of counsel from our Heavenly Father, and I just wanted, I just felt led to come in here and share some of these things with you. I hope everyone's having a blessed day. If you have a prayer request, you can leave me a message in the comment section. You can email me. And if you've never come into a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, you can find, there's a video on this channel said, called How to Find Jesus, and you can reach out to me as well. I'd be glad to help you. And so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into this, these devotions. I have a couple devotions that I like to read. And um, I thought this one was really beautiful today. And this is from the 100 Names of God. Of Yah, I like to say Yah. And I really like this. And it says, Matsuda, Fortress. He said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. And it said, or 2 Samuel 22, 2. And it says the Hebrew word for fortress refers to an impregnable stronghold, usually high up on a mountain. David, of all people, was familiar with such places. As a shepherd boy, he often had to seek out safe refuges for his flock. Later, as a young man, he fought in the Israelite army and also spent years fleeing from Saul. Whether protecting his sheep, facing an enemy in battle, or trying to elude a paranoid murderous king, David knew the importance of finding and hunkering down in elevated bastions and rocky citadels. However, he also knew that even the best earthly fortresses aren't 100% secure. Once while hiding from Saul in the recesses of a remote wilderness cave, David was caught completely off guard when Saul suddenly entered the same cave to relieve himself. Ultimately, David had to get to the place where he trusted Yah to be his ultimate protection, because Yah is higher than any tower and more invincible than any rock, he is stronghold. He is where we will find true safety and security. Even when David was outnumbered and outgunned, he believed that as long as Yah was for him, no man could harm him. In Yah, I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Psalm 56, 4. What are the specific things that threaten you now? What problems make you want to run away? Instead of seeking refuge in things of this world that don't offer lasting protection, such as job or money, relationship, sex or food or amusement, run to Yah, your fortress, and hide in Him. Having to hole up in a fortress isn't always comfortable. In fact, it's confining, but it is also temporary. Why? Because as David exclaims, Yah is not only a fortress, he's also a deliverer. When people, events, or circumstances are coming against you, Yah is the fortress who will shield you from the harshest assaults. And then it says, how in your life specifically have you experienced Yah as a fortress? Yeah, I know that when I am protected by you, Heavenly Father, no weapon used against me can be successful. I entrust myself to you and to your protection. In Jesus, Yahushua's name, amen. And then it says Proverbs 18.10. I'm going to read that. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. And so I just think that's such a beautiful verse. And then... um. I'm going to turn to the other one. Hold on a second. And, um, it's Isaiah 54, verse 17. This is just such a, an amazing verse, even for spiritual warfare. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And then this devotion I thought was so good. Um, it's called Humility and Authority. The leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is just. Second Chronicles twelve six, 
And it says, although the centurion was a Roman soldier of considerable rank, he was also a good governor who sacrificed his private wealth to help his subjects. Although he was the top man, possibly in the area of Capernaum, he was also a good man who loved his servant, who was sick to the point of death. When the centurion sent word to Jesus, Yehoshua, saying, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, Matthew 8.8, 8. this was both an act of humility and of courtesy. He knew that proper Jews thought that entering into a Gentile's house would defile them. So he said humbly to Jesus, Yehoshua, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. The gentle or the Gentile centurion's humility resembles the humility of Judah's long ago king Rehoboam and his leaders who humbled themselves. Such persons contradict the idea that those with high authority are proud or pompous. Humility and authority do not exclude each other. When they occur in the same person, it's stunning to experience that person. And then it says, consider why a person in authority might have good reason to be humble. Then pray about a situation in which you have a certain amount of control. I just thought that was so profound and so on point with how the Lord is leading and guiding us. And then um, I wanted to read this devotion as well from yesterday. Um, and it's called... The Lord.